Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2Design. In this short video, I will show you how I have made uh, this illustration showing you some shaders, uh, the lightning setup, the rendering setup, and also the post-production process in Photoshop. Let's get started. In the layers, I have divided my scene in three uh, layers, <laughs> actually. By clicking this button, you can isolate uh, the different layer to see what happened. So I uh, gathered all the background items on a first layer, and you can see uh, the different layers I have excluded, like the volumetric one. The volume layers was just a volumetric pass to add some atmospheric uh, effect into the scene. So it is using a lot of mask from the dog and every assets. As I am using an HDR map in the world setting, I have enabled multiple importance and I've increased the map resolution to 2K and the max bounces to 1K. It will reduce noise and make your lightning more accurate. In my render layer option, I have enabled a few passes so that it will output me different PNG for each pass that I will be able to combine in Photoshop saved using uh, this node setup. For the Z pass, I have used this normalized node with a mix RGB node so that this depth information can be converted into pixels. For uh, my rendering setting, I've used a uh, classical size of uh, 1k pixels and boost it to 180%. Uh, I've been using CPU rendering because it was a, a long rendering and sometimes GPU uh, may crash if the rendering is pretty long. It's not a general uh, rule. In my case, it crashed two times, so <laughs> I'd prefer to switch to CPU and found that uh, using uh, an Intel processor, the tile size of 16 was the best. For a render uh, of uh, 15 seconds in 32 by 32, I got a drop of time of 2 seconds using uh, 16 per 16. So um, going like 10% uh, uh, faster. So let's have a look to the sampling. I've used uh, a thousand uh, samples for the rendering, which is decent. I see people using sometimes 2,000 uh, samples, which for me is uh, way too big. Uh, even if I'm using uh, um, subsurface scattering here, I don't think I will add uh, more uh, interest and more uh, uh, definition in my picture uh, for such an high value. I've crammed the indirect here only for the Jack Russell um, layer. What it does is that it will uh, limit uh, the value of the indirect lightning to a single pixel, meaning that it will bring it less light um, less value to the color of the pixel so it will get white less easily and you will avoid fireflies doing so. For the light pass here I have uh, boost the volumetric uh, number of bounces so what it does is that a ray that will uh, enter a volumetric object like those cloud will uh, travel and uh, bounce eight times. For example, if uh, I have a ray going into here, it might bounce here, then on, on the Jack Russell, the branch, etc. Uh, for six times, sorry. And it will make the cloud lighter and uh, it will have a more defined transparency. So this is what those bounces uh, allow you. The more boons you have, the more uh, light will pass through or boons on the, the object and it will look sharper and closer to reality. That's why the full global illumination boosts those to a, a very high value like 180. 
I've kept the refractive caustic and refractive caustic because it wasn't a problem in my scene. If you're playing with a lot of transparency, you might be playing with those to reduce noise. And I have used a transparent uh, film so that everything that was uh, currently transparent that was showing the world uh, had a zero alpha, allowing me to add uh, additional layers in Photoshop then. Uh, I will now show you some tricks I have used on my uh, different materials. Sorry. So I, I wasn't super happy about my lightning, uh, to be honest, on this scene. I believe uh, this artwork would have a, a better potential, uh, but I wasn't able to deal with the, the directional lightning uh, as I wished. So it's not that important. I'm pretty uh, tired with this uh, project now, uh, but I think I might, I will get some critics from people about the lightning and stuff like this. So for the lightning, I've mainly used a simple world setting using an HDR here with, here this is a, a simple sphere with a, with a, a glossy shader. So here I have a, we can see that the reflection of my HDR on it. So using the uh, a mapping node here to be able to rotate um, my HDR and change the direction of my light source. So it allows me to set the, the income of the sun here. And here this pretty classical uh, uh, world setting using the multiply um, node here to set uh, the global strength of uh, the main light source and the add node here to set the global illumination meaning that the, it will soften the shadows etc so this has been explained uh, way betterly in one of my previous tutorial and even betterly by Andrew Pricey so I believe most of you knows a blender guru and he explained light and stuff like this way better than me. Now a little trick about the roof here. So it was made using a remodifier. Once it was done, once it was done I applied both uh, a remodifier and separate each of those object I don't know how to say it in English um, so that it becomes a single object and parent them to an empty so that I was able to move them separately the cool thing about this is that I was able to add some variation uh, to the color of those doing so I was able to use the randomness which is here so it's pretty self-explanatory and uh, I use this uh, to modify the base color of uh, the different objects to give more variation so there is only one of those that is UV unwrapped those are a uh, simple duplication and there is just a little map to uh, fake AO here and add some leaking uh, impression from the uh, from the object now for the house i was asked how i've done this so because it's uh, pretty detailed it is detailed because i spent a lot of time painting it <laughs> it's simply there is no no special trick mixing uh, uh, specific um, nodes or creating crazy stuff. Uh, I've just spent a lot of time uh, projecting a different uh, map on it. To create a burnt map, create a diffuse map, mix them to have a, a different color and then it's pretty simple. It's just a diffuse mixed with a glossy PSDF with uh, some different values. Very subtle glossy just to have some highlights. And it was kind of the same process for uh, the wood. It looks pretty complex here, but it's like having two different shaders mixed together to get those stuff here. So 
So I will show you the process on another uh, object. The main shader is close to a classical car paint. And then I have added a, a rust uh, layer. It is then mixed with a, a noise, uh, a noise uh, texture and also with the pointiness so that the, it appears mainly on the, those uh, edge. And what I have done, I have created this uh, color ramp here to add this white line that separates the painted part and the rusted part. And I plugged this into the bump and into the color to get this. It will make the transition between the painted part and the rust part here, adding some uh, this effect that uh, there is a layer of paint here, then a little crease, and then the rust. So I have used this uh, first on my uh, Orkish Wario. You, have, you may have seen this, this effect. And then I have just duplicated uh, this shader, turn it into black, play a little with it to create this secondary shader for the black part. And for the wheel here, I just added here a texture with a different uh, glossy level and different roughness uh, to get this wet effect. So here it appeared to be very glossy because there is nothing to be reflected on. But when it's on the ground, it looks better. You see, you have this, uh, this effect of uh, reflection here. Now for the the tree. So it's a, a dintoposcope. I didn't uh, retopologize it, which, uh, which would have been very long for nothing because it's a still image. I didn't need to optimize everything, etc. So I'm using the pointiness here to give it uh, some color variation. And the cool thing about dintopo is that it creates noise due to the all the the triangle that were generated, which is uh, really awesome for a tree. And then it's combined to this map, which is a, a tree map, overlaid, etc. And I've added, um, using the normals here, separating the blue channel, which is the top uh, part, the face that are uh, uh, pointing to the, the sky, some greenish color like foam uh, due to the, the the wetness of this part then everything is is mixed together there is also a, a UN saturation a difference uh, thanks to the layer weight and then it's a simple diffuse and glossy shader mixed together to get to this result I was pretty happy with the, the result of, of this. And the final noticeable element might be those clouds. So again, here I just used the Andrew Pricey uh, tutorial to understand how to do them. And to add uh, those colors of blue and slightly yellowish on the top, I used uh, those normal node. So this would have been the basic color, which is really uh, boring here. But using those normals, I was able to set a color on the top and the lower parts of those. And as it is a volumetric lightning, you will see that the blue is currently uh, color colorizing the top of the of the cloud, but as the light passed through it this way, it is then scattered on the bottom of the cloud. So it's uh, an important thing if you want to give some directional colors to your cloud, is that you have to put the color on the opposite side you want it to appear currently.